So let's look now at solving applications of exponential logarithmic functions. And this is going to allow us to solve real world problems that it deal with exponential and logarithms. And what we can actually do is now that we have the established rules, we can start to apply these to real life situations. And if you remember, we had some formulas from the 4.1 section dealing with compound interest, discrete, and continuous growth. And what we now can do, since we know logarithms and exponentials, is we can now solve for unknown exponents. So values in these exponents, we can actually solve the solution for. So let's look at the first one here. And Danny Boy inherits $10,000 and invests it in a GIC at 6%. We want to find out how long will it take to be worth $15,000 if it is compounded monthly. And for this one, we're doing monthly, so we can use our formula A equals P1 plus R over N to the NT. Just our formula for compound interest. So our amount will be our final amount, and in this case, it's $15,000. The principal is the $10,000 to start. One plus, now in this case, the rate is 6%. So again, we put that in as a decimal, 0 0.06 over. Now, if it is compounded monthly, that tells us our N is 12, and we have this to the 12 T. And what Danny Boy wants to figure out is how much time will this take? Well, let's clean this up a little bit here. We can take our 15,000, we have our 10,000, and 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 is really the same as 1.005 to the 12 T. So we're trying to solve for t. We can divide both sides by 10,000, which makes this a little bit easier. What well, That'll take us down to 1.5 equals 1.005 to the 12 t. And this is where we now have to use our knowledge of exponential and logarithmic functions to solve for t. Well, if we want to get t by itself here, probably the best thing we could do is log both sides. So we'll get log of 1.5 is equal to log of 1.005 to the 12t. And the reason we wanted to do that is now the 12t will come in front and we get 12t log 1.005 is equal to log of 1.5. And we're almost there because we're trying to get t by itself. We can now divide both sides by 12. And remember, log of 1.005 is just some number. Divide both sides by 12. Log 1.005. And in the end, we'll get a value for t. We just need to take that number, fire it in your calculator, and we get 6.77, and in this case, we're dealing with years. So we now can tell Danny Boy that if you want that 10,000 to become 15,000, it'll take 6.77 years. So let's look at the same question if we now had continuous growth. Well, continuous growth uses the equation F, and really that's just the final, is the initial, which is I. And remember, if it's continuous, we have this E value to the RT. There's our equation for continuous growth. Well, continuous growth for compound interest, we just put our final amounts in. We have 15,000. Our initial amount was 10,000. We're going to keep our base E, the rate in this case, we can just put it in as our decimal to the T. Now what this does is give us a equation in base E. Well, we still want to clean this up a little bit, so we'll divide both sides by 10,000.
which will give us 1.5 equals e to the 0 0.06 t. And remember, now we're trying to get something out of base e. This is where we want to ln or ln both sides. Ln of 1.5 is the same as ln of e to the 0 0.06 t. And remember, ln e just cancels each other out, and we're left with 0.06t is the same as ln of 1.5. A little bit easier of a calculation, because t then is just ln 1.5 divided by 0.06, and in the end, we get a t value of 6.76 years. So if Danny Boy takes the continuous option that's available, it's just a little bit less. And that's going to allow us to find any exponent in any of these equations. And we're going to do a number of questions like this in class.